Hello everyone, this is Neha Sharma. Today, this is video part number 3 of the explanation of chapter, the last lesson. This last lesson is written by Alphonse Dotted and uh, we have done two parts of explanation. Right now, we are on page number 7, last paragraph. So, please open page number 7 of your Flamingo book and the last paragraph we have to see. In the previous paragraph, we have seen that when the writing uh, lesson was given to the class that day, French was actually very much uh, stressed and he wondered that would the Persian force uh, would teach the peasant also to change, to change their language, would they also go in German language, right? So, this we have done in the last paragraph, in the paragraph which we have done in the last video. Page number 7, last paragraph, please keep pencil in your hand, now I am reading from here. Whenever I look up from my writing, I saw M. Hamel sitting motionless in his chair and gazing at one thing, then at another. As if he wanted to fix in his mind just how everything looked that little schoolroom. Fancy for 40 years he had been there in the same place with his garden outside and the window and his class in front of him. Now here dear students as we know that uh, M. Hammer is very upset moreover the class whosoever is sitting in the class all are disturbed uh, by listening the news. Now. Uh, here please underline this word gazing, gazing means looking intently ok and second word you have to underline here fix in his mind. So, fix in his mind means what? Fix in his mind means to store or to keep forever right. So, here French uh, when he was writing, so he looked at M. Hamel who sat still and uh, stared at the different things in the classroom in uh, succession as he wanted to memorize the appearance of everything before living means he uh, was looking at all the things like uh, he would take all the things uh, by closing in his eyes in his memory right and uh, uh, he told that uh, let us see in the next paragraph what is uh, page neck what is written just like that only the desks only the desks and the benches had been worn smooth. The walnut trees in the garden were taller. Now I am on page number 8. So please open page number 8 and the first line here says, Only the desks and the benches had worn smooth and the walnut trees in the garden were taller and the hope vine that he had planted himself twinned about the window to roof. How it must have broken in his heart to leave it all. Poor man. To hear his sister moving about in the room above, packing the trunks, for they must leave the country next day. Now here, uh, you know, M. Hamel had been teaching at the same place uh, for 40 years and uh, uh, the only change were that the desk in the classroom had worn uh, out due to the use over years, right, only that was the change and the walnut tree. Uh, in the garden outside who, which uh, M. Hamel had grown that had also grown taller and the hope vine uh, you know that also twisted twist uh, twinned means twisted T W I N E D twinned means twisted right. So, that also twisted or that also uh, you know um, you can say grown uh, taller and the hope vine uh, that twisted the building and climbed up to the roof right so that is the change only he is saying how it must have broken his heart to leave it all poor man now here he is saying that Franz uh, himself because he is feeling that the teacher must be heartbroken uh, to be sent away from a place where he had been uh, he had been living for 40 years right so it is very heartbroken for anyone why it is for M. Hamel it would it would happen with everyone because he was living here for 40 years, so it was very difficult for him to leave the place. And the noises of the sister packing and the moving the luggage, see here it is written, they are packing their trunks, right. 
uh, sister moving about in the room so actually his family was also living there right so the noises of the sister packing and the moving their luggage could be heard from the room upstairs in the uh, in the another story of the school building the, there was a residence of m hamel and the people who were living with him like his sister maybe his wife right so they were kidi uh, they were um, packing the luggage because uh, they have to move now from that place so that sound of packing of the luggage that could be heard from the uh, in the room which was coming upstairs as they had to leave the next day right so this he is saying here next is what uh, but he had the courage to hear next paragraph but he had to courage the courage to hear every lesson to the to very vast after the writing we had a lesson in history and then the babies chanted their ba bi bi bo ba right so this is what this is uh, the the pronunciation actually when the kids were doing that okay so he said uh, am hamel remained composed uh, composed and heard the lessons of the entire class but he but in this line it is written no what he had the courage to hear every lesson to very last so he said that m hamel remained composed and heard the lesson from the entire class whatever they have uh, written in the notebook after the writing task there was a lesson of history also which was followed by the phonetics like Uh, where they recited the sounds of alphabet uh, and the french referred to class as babies because although they were grown up they were reciting the lesson of phonetics with uh, which is usually done by younger children like when we uh, study so when we we are when we were in uh, you know junior classes that that time we used to do a for apple b for ball like this no so all the babies babies are what who are babies here the kids who were there in the classroom so he calls himself and his class to be babies here right so that's why next is down there down there at the back of the classroom it is here down there at the back of the classroom old hosser has put on his spectacles and holding his primer in both hands spelled the letters with them you could see that he too was crying his voice trembled with emotions and it was so funny to hear him that we all wanted to laugh and cry <coughs> laugh and cry uh ah how well i remembered it that last lesson so Uh, here in this uh, paragraph in this pa- portion of the paragraph he is saying that hosser old hosser who was sitting in the classroom he was one of the villagers he had put on his spectacles and holding the primer in his both hands what he was doing he is telling also the students were reciting the uh, phonetics of different different word different uh, letters or alphabets here right uh, sorry alphabet here and old horse at that time he had also put on his spectacles and he was uh, holding his primer in both the hands he recited the letter with the class he was uh, he was carrying his voice trembled as he spoke right um, he he friends has mixed feeling and uh, that time what happened who was crying here old horse was crying right you see that too was too he was uh, he too was crying so old hosser was also crying his voice trembled with emotions right uh, so he is actually t- telling us that uh, the old man was too disturbed that when he was uh, he was crying also and he was also uh, speaking those words so that time his voice was trembling on the other hand he also felt emotional like hosser did right and french could never forget this last lesson because uh, that time he told that uh, whatever the teacher was te- teaching uh, all he learned all with ease right 
Next is all at once, all at once the church struck, church clock struck 12, then the angelus. At the same moment, the trumpets of the Persian returning from the drill sounded under our windows. M. Hamel stood up very pale in his chair. I, I never uh, saw him look so tall. Now, all at once the church clock struck 12, right? And uh, uh, what happened then? Just then the clock at the church struck uh, 12 and the prayer song began, right? This angelus, no? This angelus. That means the prayer song in the church. So, that is called angelus. And uh, with the start, it, you know, the start is marked by the ringing of the bell. So, that is uh, what here. At the same moment, the trumpets of the Persians returning from the drill sounded under our windows. Trumpets are what? These are the musical instruments, right? Uh, so, he said after that, uh, what happened? At the same moment, the sound of the trumpets played by the Persian soldiers who were, drin who were returning uh, from their drill was also heard right and uh, M. Hamel stood up very pale. Pale means what? Pale means uh, you know uh, a person with the with the dull face. Now why he why the, his face was dull? Because he was not very happy. He was sad actually right. So M. Hamel face became dull and colorless and he uh, he get uh, he stood up uh, from his chair. I never saw him look so tall, right? Uh, he stood straight and motionless. And uh, my friend, my friends, said he, I, I, but something choked him, he could not go on. So, uh, he, M. Hamel, uh, sorry, Franz is saying that when M. Hamel, means his teacher, stood up from the chair, uh, he says that he had never appeared so tall actually, right? That time he, I never saw him to uh, look so tall. And uh, uh, he began to speak but could not continue as he was overpowered by his emotions, right? Something choked him. So, he got emotional. He took a piece of chalk and then uh, he turned to the blackboard, took a piece of chalk and bearing on with the, all his might, he wrote as large as he could. Vive la French. What he wrote? Vive la French. So, he took a piece of chalk and wrote the words Vive la French. And this Vive la French means long live French. What is the meaning? Long live French. French, uh, France, sorry, long live France, clear? Then he stopped and learned his head against the wall and without a word he made a gesture, us with his hand, school is dismissed, you may go. So what is the meaning of gesture here? Gesture means, what is the me me meaning? That means a signal, right? So because he was very disturbed he could not speak anything so what he said that he stopped writing bent towards the wall and without speaking anything he signaled the class to leave as the class was over so this is what this is the story the last lesson right so here we have uh, uh, we got to know that uh, when uh, the order from uh, the order from the Berlin directed the schools and the district in Alaska uh, and uh, they changed that order changed the situation over there right and uh, the villagers the students everyone was very disturbed right so we have learnt here that uh, that we should respect our mother tongue too right so dear kids we have learnt here that 
we uh, should not postpone our work for tomorrow obvious to the fact that life is a subject to change as what had happened to the people of alaska and the story the last lesson depicts the pathos of the whole situation about how people feel when they don't learn their own language it tells us about the significance of uh, one's language in one's life for very exist for the very existence of a race and how important it is to it, it is to safeguard the language right the mother tongue so this is about the chapter so the last uh, lesson the last french lesson taught by m hamel symbolizes the loss of language and the loss of freedom for france it became it becomes an uh, emotional lesson and rendered by m hamel to the villagers it signifies the changing order of life and uh, its impact on the sensibilities and emotions of the people i hoped i hope you enjoyed the chapter uh, in the next part of the video we will discuss some of the important questions of this the last lesson till then please read the text and try to solve the questions which are given here in your book as think as you read these boxes are given here right and some of the exercises questions are also given to you so that also you have to do to try to do these type of questions till then thank you very much stay safe stay healthy